Welcome to episode 13 of The Snowball Effect. I'm here with Rob Hill from Triple Whale. Rob, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, 13. 13. Fancy, good luck. Good number. Good number. Is it? I think it might be a bad luck. Maybe we'll have to skip to episode 14. <laughs> Just like the other Amazing. Amazing. Um, but yeah, really appreciate you having uh, you coming on here. I know we got to kick it in and uh, geek out and that was really yep. fun. Um, but yeah, man, I'd love to learn more about like how you got into the whole world of e-commerce and digital marketing. Um, I know you, re- I know right now you're working at Triple Whale, but I don't really know about your background before that. And, uh, you know, love to unpack that. Yeah, man, I'll give you kind of the quick elevator pitch. So uh, I'm a big weirdo. I went to school for economics. I wanted to be an investment banker. I went to Indiana University, go Hoosiers. Um, and then when I was there, I didn't want to be an investment banker. And so I got really into technology and super nerdy stuff. I was building AWS stuff, uh, iPhone apps, WordPress stuff, all sorts of things. And then I wanted to make proper money and that really wasn't helping me. Um, so I figured that, or I guess my realization was when I made people money, I could ask people for more money. And so that was more advantageous than building people a cash register because people would come to me, I'd build them this beautiful website and like, Hey, my website's broken. Like, no, it's not. Your business just sucks. And yeah. So I got into marketing. Um, a friend of mine, she was a big yoga influencer at the time um, on kind of when like Instagram yoga stuff was kind of still popping off. Um, and she wanted to do eBooks. And so I was like, yeah, I was actually kind of just searching around. This was in my twenties. Um, didn't really know what I was gonna do with my life. And I got into photography. And so I ended up shooting the whole um, eBook for her. And then um, she was like, Hey, how do we sell this? I was like, Hey, I see people use Facebook ads. Let's try that. Um, and so we marketed it on Facebook ads. I actually built it in Canva, shout out Canva. Um, and then the subsequent books I learned in design and kind of built it out the proper way. But uh, it goes to show you, man, MVP quick and dirties can actually be the path. And the so way to do it. Yeah, it really is. We it, it honestly was the most uh, grossing book out of So we ended up launching four books and that was the one that made us the most money and it was built in Canva, which is crazy. And so, I mean, I, I was stretching Canva to its limits, to be fair, where I had like a hundred page book and like definitely wasn't built for that. It's an incredible product, but uh, too long, didn't read. That's where I got my start in marketing. And then from there, I worked at a luxury real estate firm um, in the marketing department. And then I moved over to Whole Foods. I'm running all the paid media recruitment there. And then I worked at an agency out of New York called Flatiron. Great guys. Um, got to work with really crazy venture back companies like Clutter, Wag uh, jackpot. I got to work with Oprah. Um, so it was really, really cool. I spent a ton of money, mostly in app installs, which I hadn't actually done before. It was mostly, um, e-commerce or lead gen. So having app installs is really cool because it's pretty much as sophisticated as you get, especially we had free trials. So you had to do cohorting, you had blended CAC, you had, it was just, it's a very, very complex, uh, system compared to DTC where it's like you spend money, you make money. Um, and so that brought me to running my own agency. So I left there and then I spun off and did my own shop. Um, and then I started bantering back and forth with AJ, um, uh, my boss and CEO at triple well founder or co-founder of triple well, AJ, Max and Yvonne are the three co-founders. Um, and then we actually kind of just started jamming a little bit and it was my first private investment. So I put some money in. And then we kind of just started talking more and more. They were leaning on me for kind of some marketing strategy. Like AJ is an incredible product guy. Max is a phenomenal businessman. Um, and so the marketing piece was kind of the, the, the missing lever. And then they offered me the CMO job to come on full time. So I've been CMO at Triple since uh, September of last year. Very, very cool. And I, I like in, in my head, I've always thought of you as like, the, you're the paid media guy on Twitter. Like you're always dropping some <laughs> acronym that I have to go and Google when you're dropping it. I'm like, what is, what is this guy talking about? But it's, it makes sense. I mean, you've been in the Facebook ad game for a while. So I'm curious, like that first ad that you launched, you know, back with the, uh, the ebook for the photographer or for the, yeah, for the photographer, um, like how, like what, well, first, what year was that? And then second, like how much has, have things changed in, in the ad buying space since then? Oh, a ton. Um, the first ad was actually um, her in a bikini doing this was before they had like bands on kind of like hot girls doing stuff. It was her in a bikini doing a handstand. Um, so she's like incredibly graceful, very good looking, um, you know, and she's doing this handstand stuff. And we did that. And then we just smashed retargeting because she had never run any ads before. And so we were in like, I mean, it was back in the day where it was like literally eight, nine row ads, like guru screenshot yep, kind of yep. shit where it was like, I mean, and, but it was real. It wasn't <laughs> right. like I was faking it. Like we were printing money. It was, it was really 
um, it crushed it. And then she actually ended up running some courses. She has a thing called authentic movements now where she they actually have a whole resort in Costa Rica retreat stuff. She's great. But yeah, I mean, this was shit, maybe uh, 2010, 12. So, oh, I mean, okay. it's a while, okay. like, like super CPMs, long time ago. CPMs uh, weren't too bad. <laughs> Oh, there was so much arbitrage to be had. The targeting was fantastic. And uh, again, like the retargeting was just incredible because she had a huge, huge Instagram audience. And so she would literally post and then that retargeting audience would be off of either video views or engagements and boom, there would literally like, it was, I remember like each post of hers, we quantified it where it was like, we were making five or $6,000 a post. And like, that's not like, crazy money but for me i was broke didn't really no, understand no, things amazing. and like it was like proper money i was like oh this is awesome and i was on a rev share so it wasn't even like a retainer so every time so it was fantastic um and to bring it back around now that is not the case anymore you can't yes. you can't just put a dollar into facebook and smack it and it gives you like six or seven anymore um that that is just not not really the case anymore if you're running you know um even 2x row as 3x you're you're a god it's 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 hard in the streets out there right now totally i, I mean i even know from like 2017 to now it's changed dramatically and I'm, i couldn't yeah. even imagine back 2010 2012 like it must have just been a whole different game oh absolute money machine and it was just such a bear or, or such a bull market in general like everybody was making money not just on facebook but just in general there was just a lot of money going around and uh I mean, it really was like the cocaine and champagne era. Like there was just, if you had any semblance of best practices in a product and a website, like even just a click funnels page, people were just printing money. It was, yeah, very lucrative era. Totally, totally. All right. So you're definitely a digital marketing OG. You've been doing this since the 2010 days. So now we all know you're working for Triple Whale. Well, you're their CMO. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're building there. I mean, I think a lot of people that are going to be listening know about the product, but maybe just give like the, the quickest elevator pitch possible and then like what you guys are working towards. Yeah. So basically Triple Whale, well, it's in its name. We create value in three layers. So we have data aggregation, warehousing, we have visualizations, and then we have tracking or attribution. Um, another way to think about it is we have lean in metrics. So we have a dashboard that you can create totally customizable, all the metrics you care about. These are going to be lean in metrics. So you're going to be looking at those daily, multiple times a day, perhaps. Um, then we have lean out metrics like customer insights, three types of AOVs, product journeys, kind of stuff where you'll, you'll smoke it if you got it, have a drink and kind of lean back and, um, you know, monthly strategy, quarterly strategies be based off of this data. Um, and then we have profitability. So you can track basically your whole PL on there. And so this is kind of funny because the P word was like a dirty word. You really didn't hear it for a long time because when the top line is so meaty, it really doesn't matter. Like it's going to get, you're going to make money because you're just printing so much money at the gross level. And so now you really need to understand how to run a business. You need to understand what margins are. You need to understand like what paid media you should, or what products you should promote with your paid media because paid media is, it's a lot more expensive now. And so um, ultimately that's what we do. We help people run better, more profitable businesses and deploy more paid media at scale without being blind. Totally. And I know like I've been, you know, watching you guys since, since, you know, I, maybe you raised your like pre-seed. I don't know what it was, but you got on my radar somehow. And I've seen the product, you know, evolve a ton. And I think what you guys have now is like unbelievable. Um, but I know you guys just raised a lot more. And of course the journey's gets just getting started. Could you touch on like a little bit more of what the plan is for maybe the next six months a year? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So yeah, we just closed on our A, which is pretty crazy. Uh, around 28 million for our A, which is uh, it's insane. pretty, pretty insane. decent check. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For an eight month old, old company, it's insane. pretty Pretty insane. Yeah. Yeah. So super awesome job there for AJ and Max who they, they just in Yvonne, they just deserve all the credit of um, the timing, the luck, the platform, everything was just perfect for them. Um, the big things that we're working on right now are ultimately automation, machine learning and inventory tracking. Um, so being able to automate and understand kind of how to deploy ads, what ads you should be deploying, what ads you should be killing, um, and then some machine learning to give you some insights into kind of if you stopped running ads today, how much money would your marketing ecosystem pump out? And then lastly, helping you understand how to match your supply with your demand. Um, when you're deploying paid media, the scariest thing is one, when the payment gets cut off and you're like, oh, shit, my ads aren't running. And then two is uh, when you run out of stock. And so that's even worse where um, you have all this demand, but no supply to satiate it. Plus, like, unless you're, you know, somebody you're looking usually at, at least a two month lead time to get new inventory in. And so um, people don't understand or 
I think it's a misconception that like DTC businesses are like super cash flow heavy. Like they're absolutely just that you need to be really well capitalized in DTC. And so having two months of no cash flow can scuttle some really good businesses. And so that's something that we're really looking into as well as some really cool kind of creative insights and stuff like that. But ultimately we're dubbing ourselves the e-com OS. So being able to encompass everything that matters in terms of not only a marketing ecosystem, but also running your business more profitably to make sure again, that that demand curve and that supply curve are matching up. And then even more so maybe even getting into, Hey, you need inventory. And then also, Hey, here's some money to buy that inventory. So those are kind of the, the six, 12 month goals. Very cool. So, I mean, like one thing that comes to my mind is like with all this data that triple whale is going to have access to for all these merchants, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be able to make smarter decisions than the operator, as far as like when to deploy ads and which ads to deploy and stuff like that. So my question is, will, will triple whale ever be running my ads? That's a great question. We don't want to be like the Uber where we're going to put people out of a job, but we do think that there are some ways that we can make better decisions than some people, but there's always going to be a human element to that deployment, whether it's checking that this is how you want to deploy the ads. Um, But yeah, there's definitely um, some really interesting things coming down the pipeline where we'll be able to ingest all this data and ultimately make better decisions. Cause not only that, we can make more decisions without costing you all this cognitive load where yeah. you can concentrate on more value add activities than deploying paid media. Totally. And so media buyers are going to be uh, looking for jobs is what, is what I'm hearing. No, 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 no. That's, <laughs> no, that's joking, exactly what, yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I, I see the perception <laughs> and that's not it. It's more so that they'll be able to use their time on other things. I mean, and you're seeing it now, right? Where like all the best accounts that I sit across are simplified now. Like all the hacks of like having 78 ad sets yeah. and like day partying and like all this nonsense of like tweaking this, tweaking that, like it, their arbitrage is just gone, especially on Facebook. And so having a more simple structure um, is just a better play right now and it's more performant. And so that's kind of where it's going to be where you can start creating better offers. You can start working on your community. You can start working on um, upsells, cross sells, um, how can I get better margins? Can I get my shipping and handling costs down? Like these other things that are going to drive value for the business that you might not be doing now because you're deploying 78 ad sets with 35 different creatives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's, that's just not the path anymore. Totally. No, that makes a ton of sense. Cool. Well, very exciting. Definitely looking forward to seeing how Triple L progresses. Um, so I guess my last question for you is like, what would you say is a trend right now that you're seeing in the e-commerce, DDC, digital marketing world, anything um, that, you know, people might not know about that you think they could find valuable? That's a great question. I think it's going to sound cheesy, but the, and it's kind of three, so I'm cheating. But ultimately what I've seen people succeed and even scale right now is they have three things. Um, one, they have a really strong community and that sounds so cliche and so like douchey, but it's real. Like there's people behind these purchases and the more you can connect with those people and bring them into your ecosystem and not just sell to them, like give them extra value adds. Like uh, one of our homies, uh, Ash, who uh, runs, he's a CMO at Myavi. They have a phenomenal community that's basically almost self-sufficient, which is incredible. Like he literally does nothing. He just gives the gals product and a place to hang out. Um, so I would say make a church that your people can worship at. Like that, that's a really, really important thing. Um, the second thing is uh, fundamentals. Like a lot of people don't have great economics and making sure you do have the economics to sustain, sustain like these businesses, it's, it's a big challenge. Um, so the fundamentals, a community, and then diversifying spend. And we're seeing most people, obviously, is, again, it's going to sound cliche, but TikTok, figuring out how you can spend more money on TikTok is really what we've seen. So the people that check those three boxes have been not only like sustaining, but actually growing in this kind of bear market, if you will. So get a church to worship at, figure out how to make your economics stronger, and then ultimately figure out how to diversify your spend. And a lot of people are diversifying into TikTok. That makes a ton of sense. And just out of my own curiosity, like what would an example of that church be? Would that be like a Facebook group, a Discord, or is it like a physical location? It's a great question. So it depends. It's context. So um, for example, so for Triple Whale, we run a Slack group. So we have an exclusive Slack group called Narwhal Nation. My Avi is actually a Facebook group. Um, uh, Jason Wong has a fantastic discord for dough. So I think it depends on where you're at. There's some, cause this, this is actually like, it's very nuanced, but Slack's a terrible place to build a community because the economics are horrible, but you can kind of rock a free plan forever, which isn't like the horrible right. thing. 
Discord, there's a lot of kind of spin up costs, especially if you have a kind of an older demographic where it's just really confusing. Like people aren't used to the, which is ironic because chat was like the OG thing and it's coming back around like IRC, um, which is kind of funny. But yeah, so Discord, there's a little bit of kind of spin up costs and then you can kind of get lost in Discord a little bit, in my personal opinion. And then Facebook, some people just hate Facebook. And so ultimately, like the easiest thing to do is one, ask your community and then two, just make a decision. Like you can kind of vacillate on it and go back and forth, but ultimately um, do that. And to your point, in person is fantastic. The economics aren't great. So we're going to have something called the Whaley's where we're going to have DTC awards this year in September. Nice. You better make it out to Austin. It's going to be I'll amazing. Be Noah. Yeah, you got to come out. Um, but yeah, you remember the OG MTV uh, awards with the little moon man? We're going to have uh, a whale. Anyways, um, so in person can really work, but better than in person is if you can find ambassadors, because we're also doing a whale roadshow. And then ultimately, we'll have ambassadors across the country and then London and Toronto, where they can actually we'll just empower them to run their own meetups. That's the ideal. Um, but ultimately, there's going to be some startup costs. So in person is fantastic. But you really got to make sure that the economics work for you because the costs can spin out of control pretty quickly. Absolutely. Well, all amazing advice. Thank you so much, Rabbi. It was a pleasure having you on. And we will see everybody in the next episode. Thank you again, Rabbi. No, you're the best. And you're coming on the pod too, which is yes. going to be incredible. Thank you for so much for all your grace in the uh, scheduling. You've been such a, such a gem <laughs> of a human you are. Of and course, I appreciate course. that.